All right, here there we go, is. folks. So tonight is March 22nd, uh, 2022. We're going to have Ron Howe demonstrating his hummingbird houses tonight. And I'm going to let Ron take it over. He's been doing this for how long now? Turning 12 years. 12 years. He's been turning yeah. for about 12 years. And he's done some wonderful stuff. He's got a very artistic mind. So I'm going to let him take it over and show us that great little hummingbird house. Ron? Great. All right. Get that turned around where you can hear me. <clears throat> this is really a, a very simple project. Any new, any new turner can, can do this and do all of the coloring, the embellishing. There's not anything really fancy that really takes a lot of, a lot of skill to it. And they're fun to make. I started out uh, November. I made 60 of them. By Christmas, I had sold around 50 at $45 each. They're an easy money maker with very little material in it. So, <clears throat> I'm, huh? I just put the pictures on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Turn this around. Yeah, okay. There we go. I learned to turn these last year. Aha. Uh -huh. well, I, I figured you were kind of upside down anyway, so I just try. Yeah. Yeah, I learned to turn these last year with Jerry Masonier that started turning these. A lady came down the mountain, as he tells the story. She came down the mountain and asked him to make 20 of them. So he made one, he made two, he made three. Okay, if she wants 20, she may want 40. I gotta put this on a fast track system. So he put it on a fast track system and he made 40. <coughs> when she finally came back to the shop, she only bought a few. She didn't want to pay anything for them. So she didn't buy but a couple. And the club that he belongs to was getting ready to do a, a fundraiser and they were turning in the mall, which has been several years ago, and uh, they decided to do hummingbird houses. They raised $3,600 for hospice, just doing the hummingbird houses. <clears throat> yeah, and Jerry is also selling these. A per someone came to him from the North Carolina State Magazine and asked him if he could make them for the magazine. How many do you want to start with? 200? Maybe 300? So, I'm not in production turning. I'm not going to do that. But he figured out how to, how to increase his fast tracking just to doing a step at a time multiple. Boom, 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 do a bunch of them. Go back to the next step, do all of them, in, including the lids. And that's what he did. And uh, in June of last year, he had made over 5,000. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. You put it on the fast track, and these things are really easy to do. And the same system can be done with uh, Q-tip holders, uh, uh, other such small lidded vessels, <clears throat> and just about anything. So put that away. I endeavor to do many of them differently. I get that over. Are that better there? And I do put some texture in them, do some coloring. The coloring is just simple ink. Blow it around with the airbrush. And some of them I just leave. Oh, there we go. Yeah, get it to the right camera. This one is, is a little bit bigger in diameter, which I made a bunch of them with the lid eye hook. And this one that I, I did was just beads. So people kind of one. And another one. 
It is done in the sunset. And I made several of these. It's just cedar. But the wood kind of does the texturing, coloring itself. So I just left it like that. Made the lid out of cherry. And this is the midnight. Done in blue and white. On the tops where I where I do this where I do the spiraling, I use a spiral tool to put that uh, glaze in there, and then I go over the top of it with the uh, Hampshire sheen uh, waxes, different colors for different ones. Yeah, this one in the sun in the sunset does very very well with the gold em em embellishing wax. This one I did with beads. Just did covered the whole thing up with beads. Some of these I left plain. That is a comes out of a furniture manufacturer. It just cut offs and they're about the right length. And this one I used the texturing to I just Spiral tool did a lot of texturing, separated the textures, different ones with the little, little divot in the wood. I will get these out of the way. I'll sell them. <laughs> tell you what, we'll take one of them and, and put it in in the raffle for tonight. I'll let John pull one out that he likes. Now I'm going to start these. Is that way over there to the camera? It's just a two inch square block. I measure down one and a half inches from the top on a center line. Drill a seven eighths inch hole. Go down to two and a half inches on that center line and, and drill a quarter inch hole. And that's for the perch. And that's all it is. I do a, a lot of these at one time, so I made a little storyboard. It's two inches wide, fits right over the piece, get it in place, ice pick here, ice pick there, it's already marked, and then I would take the little divot thingy, <coughs> the spring-loaded punch. Y'all have one of these? Yeah, it's a great tool to have, because once you've got your spot marked, you just make a good little divot. A good little divot in there <coughs> allows those Forstner bits to find the center. And they do well with that. Yes, I would hollow it, drill, drill through it with a one and a half inch Forstner bit. But that's that's so boring to watch. <laughs> yeah, these blanks that I have are already bored out. Perch hole, entry hole, and bored out with the one and a half. And as far as the depth, you only need to go just below that perch entry. 
But we'll see how long it takes to turn one of these. How long is it going to take? Pardon? Six minutes? You think? Yeah. Yeah. Pardon? Sure. I was thinking about the drilling, so I put it in there for the drilling. And one thing that you want to do is make you a jam chuck. And you want to step for the thickness of, that you're turning to. That just slips on. And you don't want to put a big old hole in the bottom. So I'm using this drive. It's just the point sitting way back in there. And I just use those teeth to hold it. But you can make one out of wood. Just so you've just got a flat spot. Uh, this is this is cherry. And what speed do we want to turn that at? Pardon? Or let's go ahead and crank it up a little bit. With the roughing gouge, you want to move your body with the tool. Makes a much more even cut. See how I'm doing on the thickness? I can tell what my thickness is just by looking at that entry hole. That could go down a little bit thinner and not hurt anything. Oh, pull it out, okay. I'm do a little bit of a feature down here at the bottom. Just set that in there with the tool. Not right there. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> we'll look and see for the texture. It's got some tear out. So it needs quite a bit of sanding. And I can slow the speed down a little bit. It's 18, 1700. This, this tool, the gouge I've got sharpened with the 600. That is much smoother and will take less sanding. I'm sanding with 150. But when I do the sanding on these, I'm making multiple, so I turn it at a high speed. Yeah. Now turning these at home on my lathe where I'm used to everything, I do them in just about two minutes finished. Pardon? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I am way behind them. Oh, it is, absolutely. Yeah, a few little tool marks in that, but I'm going to call that one good for that.
Yeah, on that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, the only thing to do do then is make the lid. The body is finished. All I use is the refing gas. Yeah. When I'm turning the bodies, the refing gouge is the only tool that I use. Unless I use a spiral tool, I could do a spiral tool in here. Yes. Yeah, I, I just leave the body a little bit thicker, because those those beads, the one that I showed you there with the beads, uh, that was before I fixed one, and I fixed one. All I did was bring the points in, ground them off, and so that when it digs in there, it doesn't dig. It only digs in about half half the way that the tool is made. A wood? Yeah. Uh, the hard woods take a little more pressure. Uh, the soft woods like this, it doesn't take very much pressure at all. The thing is, when you're using the spiral to us, once you enter the wood, whatever angle you have this spiral tool set, you want to keep that angle, and all you do is move it across the wood. And it's back and forth, but keep it at the same angle. Yeah, the soft wood tears out more. Yeah, and yet I can turn this this way now, and I could do the same thing and make that an orange peel. It's like an orange peel. <laughs> I'm missing a tool. There it is. And I, I use this one quite a bit. It's a texturing tool. This has a little wheel that spins. I might do that on the top. Uh, doing that side grain is not real pretty, but it's something. Let's put a couple of little separation marks. Anything that's got a sharp corner, you can do that with. If you will take a art, it says a nylon brush, and I've cut it off really short. You get these little feathers on wood where you've textured it. Turn the lathe on. Turn it up high. Turn it off and go to reverse.
and then 90% of those little feathers are gone just with the brush. Yeah, I see that's fine. Oh, next we want to put some color on it. And where did I put all the dye? Maybe I didn't bring the dye with me. No? Oh crap, all the boxes are out of the truck. No, it's alcohol dye. You want a box of dye? You got alcohol dye box? Uh, yellow, red, and orange. Yellow, red, and orange. Uh huh. <clears throat> when I'm doing this, I use this little paint set. It comes from Harbor Freight. It's a hundred and roughly hundred and eighty dollars for the complete set, six airbrushes. The airbrushes are a double action. You push it down. That one's clogged up. Yep. Yeah, it all leaked out. But the double action means you push down for the airflow and you bring it back to increase the amount of paint. And the paint's just coming out of these just coming out of these little bottles. Yeah, the trans tint dye, uh huh? You have a yellow? Yeah. Mm hmm. You got a yellow? It looks like that might be yellow. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you have a red, that looks like red. Oh. I'm going to start with this right around the entry hole. Just get that a little, make sure that's a little darker. Just a slow turn.
Did you find a red? Uh, no, I keep finding purple. Purple and orange seem to be Bob's favorite colors. What's black? Let's go get red off the shelf. That's empty. That's purple. A red and a chestnut. Tell, tell Bob to put it on our bill. Yeah, we got the red, we got the yellow and the orange. You have a black? We do have a black. I saw a black. There it is. See, you remember where I put it. There's a black, there's a purple. No, that's black. Black. So that's it? Is it either one? Yeah. Wow. What's that? Oh, did you get a knife? Well, it's not pointed enough. See. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done that many times. Getting that thing out of there. And without cleaning the brush, I can go from the lightest color to the darkest color in steps. And you don't have to clean the airbrush in between. Pardon? No, it's dye. It's the chestnut spirit stains. It's alcohol dye. You got the orange. You gonna put your orange in the red? Mm -hmm. you trust me to pour with your fingers there? Yeah. It eventually washes off. A little more? Yeah, a little bit more. Is that enough? Mm hmm Now I got some orange. Black, red, then orange. Yes. Do I trust you? How much can you be trusted? Well, I got it all over me. Well, so. we, we won't ask your wife. 
Unfortunately, she's out of town. So. Oh. <laughs> I think it's got chunks. Of, oh, it's got the lid still in there. Something. Yep. Got that red stopper thing in there. Oozing around it. How much you got in there? Uh, Just a little bit. Of, I think. A little more than that. I think I can do with that. With the black, I'm not going to spray very much. Just a little bit of a shadow line here. A little bit of a shadow line at the top. So did you tell them about where you got the airbrush set up? Harbor Freight. Really? What was it? A buck two ninety five for the whole setup? Yeah, buck ninety five. Yeah, if it's on sale. A dollar two ninety five, plus about a hundred and seventy on top of that. On top of one hundred seventy. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're finished with that, and from there I just use the uh, permanent ink. I'll put a little dot of ink on there and use the airbrush with just clear one and just blow that to scatter it to make the lines and I typically use the I'll use black green red and sometimes the gold the gold doesn't mark it real well uh, and then I, I just got some silver today I was going to try the silver but apparently I left that box at home When I do the blue ones, I start with white and then use a light blue to blend down and then use a darker blue for the end, do the ends in black. And that's got some, uh, yeah, that's got some of the silver uh, embellishing wax in it. Oh yeah, you could do that. Yeah, but if I texture it, I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some wax in it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed bringing that because I had my waxes in there too, and we could add a little wax in there. Uh huh. Oh, cool. Oh, it opened. It opened. Yeah. We just need the silver. You have a paper towel. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I did a demo at the uh, Hunt County Club a couple years ago, and uh, one of my friends from high school that I still hear from a lot is uh, Vanna White's agent. And so he had talked to her. She had the time, and she was going to come and be my assistant. So that morning around 10.30, I get a phone call from the agent, she can't be there. She's in the hospital. She just had an emergency appendectomy. So I said, well, what can we substitute? He said, I'll get you a substitute. So when it came time for the demo, Sharon Ars came up and helped me. 
and then the product that I finished with that, I took it home to let it dry. I made a bowl for it. It was a dirty pour, and I put a knob on it, put it on the bowl, and then at the club here, I presented it to her substitute award. Uh, well, that's the way it happened. Uh, because you can paint right over it. It goes in, it goes in easily, spreads around good. Yeah, it will dry. Yeah, you take off the excess very easy. Uh, getting it on your fingers, your hands, a, a little whoops, cleaner that you have at home will we'll take it off. Oh, yeah. Pass those around. <laughs> Say again. My face, yeah, just my name. For making the lids, I take a piece of walnut. I mark the centers on it. Y'all know how? Everybody knows how to mark the center. Best thing I know to do, and the quickest and easiest, is to use one of these center finders. You just make a little line across the center. Go to the next side. Go to the next side. Next side, mark it. And if you can see on this one. Where am I going? Oh, it's over him. Yeah. Get that up for Trying to get there. There you can see the pencil marks. If you notice, on both sides, there's a double line. So to find that center, I just go in between that little square in the middle, and that's the center. A, a gloss, a high gloss uh, lacquer. Yeah. And I had some paint in this in the, in the other paint box, but it's called a Tester's Wet Look, and that comes out really glossy. But it's a little can, and they're, if you're using it very much to do multiple items, it's too expensive. So I just use the high gloss.
uh, for the size of the lid. I just want the lid bigger than the house. So I just take a caliper, kind of mark it that's just a little over two and a quarter inches. And that's what I will want to turn that roundness down to. Just a little bit off of there. <laughs> yes. And never move the tool rest when the lathe is running. Right? Uh huh. When you're marking the centers <clears throat> for drilling the entry hole, you can also use one of these rulers that has a center in it. Oh, no, we're heading. This way. Right there, the zero. So then you can measure out whatever you need. On the two inch, you just put the inch marks right on it. It marks the center for you. So you put a mark top, mark at the bottom, draw a straight line between, you've got the centers marked for drilling your entry hole and the perch hole. I'll measure two inches, two inches, and two inches. I get three lids out of that piece. Uh, the one that just turned. Oh, it's out there. Okay. have what I left at home is a sizing tool from Robert Sorby and you put a bedan in it. I didn't put a bedan in mine. I put a carbide tool in there so it's not going to need to be sharpened for probably two or three years with the way I use it and you can set the depth of where you want it and with that sizing tool all you do is get it started and you just rotate it down when you're on the center it's finished. 
So you go boom, 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 do three or four in a row. Once you've got it set, if you're doing multiple uh, little lidded boxes, you can do the same thing. The disadvantage of not having the sizing tool is I've just got to go over and over and over, get it down to the right thickness, and hope that you don't go past it. About it, maybe an eighth of an inch. Almost there. That's what I don't like about doing it this way is trial and error over and over. That takes up a lot of time. Will it fit now? Just all but. Pardon? A wrench? No. Wow. Just when you think it's just right, it's one way or the other. We got it. So then what do we do? I'm just going to take a bowl gouge and start shaping the top. Yeah. Would you ever decorate the top with the spiral 
Uh-huh. Yeah, most of them I do. Taking the beading tool and just make a little bead there for the lid. No, this is one that I shortened. Yeah, I took probably an, almost an eighth of an inch off those corners. But I, when I'm doing doing them on the sides, I don't I don't need to go a lot real deep. <clears throat> I'm going to pick up that line off of that bead. Always turn the machine off before you move the tool rest, right? Take that right down to the bead. spray that black. And always this little bit of a overhang on the house. You want to get your black paint in there on that edge. <clears throat> I'm out of black. Uh, I would go ahead and do the whole thing in black. Take an embellishing wax. Silver will look good on that.
sometimes of putting this wax on, I get kind of silly and try to do it too sparingly where it doesn't cover. And then you have to just keep dipping into the can. Looking for the parting tool. I know it was here because I had to put the handle on it. When you're blind, you're blind. And whatever you're looking for, it'll be in the last place you look. So, I've got to go ahead and take that top off. Well, that thing is tighter than the average bear. Get that relatively flat on the top. And then, I want that center point to just touch it. And it's got a little touch. <coughs> that center point just gives a place for the drill bit to go in. Started in the hole, just keep it going straight. And then I've got a place to put the hook in.
Uh, yeah, I buy them online and buy them at the store too. At the stores, it, it's hard to get the right size. This is from CML Supply, micro drill bit, has two different chucks. Can I get it up here? Oh, okay. And just a micro drill bit set. I bought that online and probably paid about $20 for it. Wasn't at all expensive. No. All you have to do is drop, drop that container one time with it open and probably won't do it again. It takes a while to pick them all up. in tight enough. And for a tenon to fit in, I don't need a wide one, just enough to fit in. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, good fit, just snug enough to hold. <clears throat> I'll put some glue on there, stick it on, make a perch, or go to the perch bowl. I'll have a perch bow. It's a perch. Yeah. Yeah. 
I make these uh, perch perches out of ebony and dye them black. And that box that had the dyes in it that I neglected to bring with me has leather dye. And the leather dye, if you want something black, I mean really black or real black, use the leather dye. But don't go to Michael's or uh, Hobby Lobby to buy it. Go to Tandy Leather and get the, the pro leather dye. And it is, it's a better product. It is darker. Pardon? Too much blue. Yeah. Too much blue in it. And about a hundred, probably a hundred and ten now. I had a friend in Oklahoma that wanted two of them. So I put him in a package and mailed it to him. I got his check with the note in there. He needed six more because he showed them off to different people and he needed six more. So boom, there was, there was the first eight. Yeah, it was just like that. And from that sale, I've gotten two more sales off of it, one each from different people. Uh, one of my daughter's friends, I made a pair for uh, somebody that she works with, and she wanted some. She wanted one mailed to her mother and one to her father. So I mailed those, and I got sales off of those. Yeah, they're a fun project to do. You can take the same fast-tracking system, and if you're doing uh, a Q-tip holders for the bathroom, with that sizing tool, you can set it for making that top. And once you get it turned down away, you take it and go buzz. You go buzz, buzz, buzz. Do four lids at a time. And that, that's what I do with that sizing tool. <clears throat> yeah. Pardon? How much can you charge for those? houses? Yeah. I've been charging 45 for them. I say Dallas club members, they probably get one for 25. And that's all there is to turning them. That what takes the most time, as far as the, the body, is drilling that hole. And it's just a pain in the rear to do. You need to crank, 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 crank. But once you get down in here, you don't have to worry about going in and out to get the debris out, because the debris comes out the hole. Uh huh. Yeah, see it's got the teeth marks from the chuck on it. Yeah, I just chuck it up, drill the hole. And once you chuck it up, it, it, the more perfect two by two that you have, the better that works. If you have one that's not quite two by two, you'll, you'll drill it, you'll have one side that's much wider than the other side. So just, just do the best you can to do square wood. And they're done that. Yeah. That's an easy mistake to do. Uh, and the texturing and the texturing and coloring, I use uh, pretty much what, what I have here today. I use the uh, chestnut spirit stain. Any alcohol stain will work because it dries fast. You can go from one color to the next to the next. And then put the black on. <clears throat> with the blue houses, is, I start with white. Then I go to a light blue, then a dark blue, and then the black. With the um, sunsets, I do the yellow, the red, the orange, and then the black. Yes, because and here's, here's a, a true fact from ornithology, which is the science of birding. A hummingbird will not nest in an enclosed vessel of any kind. They do not, they will not do it. They've got to have open space around that nest. Yeah, I, wa I watched a nest at a nursing home. It was right outside a window, and the nest was only that high off the ground. 
you watch the hummingbirds come and go and come and go. Yeah, it became quite a feature. Everybody wanted to go to that, that to that room to watch the hummingbirds. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. And Ron, Ron has one more task. You get to draw the first picture. 